Hello, my name is Cory Yoder of Coriander Quilts, and this is the third video in a four-part series on hand quilting. If you've missed the first two videos, I have linked to those in the description box below so you can go catch back up. Today we are talking about the technique of hand quilting, and I'm excited to share this video with you. Down below, you can see that I have created a little mini quilt sandwich using backing, batting, and then a top piece of fabric. And I have also marked my blue lines, these are my quilting lines, using my blue Dritz Mark Be Gone marker. I received a comment from Kay War recently that I wanted to mention. She said that she did not like using this blue marker because you have to so heavily saturate your fabrics after you are done doing your quilting to remove the blue line. And she is exactly right. This marker does require a lot of saturation to remove the blue lines completely or after you wash it the first time. And I think that is a great thing to remember or if you've never used the blue marker to be aware of that it does require a lot of water to remove the blue lines and you might not prefer that at the end of your project. So just something to keep in mind. I had another couple great comments that I wanted to share with you as well. I've really appreciated the comments here on my YouTube channel as well as over on my blog because it helps me know what I may have skipped over when I'm explaining something or maybe there's something that you had a question about that I just did not cover. So those comments are so helpful to me and I really appreciate them. Gwen Welliver asked if the 505 spray based this spray based right here, gums up my sewing machine needle or my hand quilting needle when I am using it for spray basting. And the, the answer is no, it does not. And that is one of the reasons I really like this spray based in particular is because it is not as gummy and sticky as some other spray bases are. I have used this base to make my quilt sandwich and I just love the way it works. It holds everything in place nicely, but I can reposition things if I need to and stick them back down. It is definitely my spray based of choice. So that was a great question from Gwen. And then Lisa G over on my blog had a question about my batting. I had mentioned that I don't like using 100% cotton batting in my hand quilting projects. And she wondered why. The reason is, is that sometimes 100% cotton batting will have little cotton fiber tufts within the batting. And if you hit one of those with your needle when you're hand quilting, it doesn't go through as easily. So for that reason, I personally prefer using an 80-20 uh, cotton poly blend or even 100% polyester is really nice to hand quilt through. There are other options, lots of different batting options. So if you have one that you like using for machine quilting, there's no reason not to try that for hand quilting. One thing to keep in mind is how densely you need to quilt your projects. And that information can be found on the labels of the batting that you are choosing. It will tell you how closely your quilting lines need to lay together. So that is something to keep in mind when choosing batting. Let's go ahead and start talking about the, te the technique of hand quilting. I have threaded my needle and I have also added a little knot at the end of my thread. I use a quilter's knot oftentimes just to make that little knot, but you don't have to do a fancy knot, just get a little knot in the end of this thread. I am using 12 weight Aurifil thread, which is great for hand quilting, and it is the dark gray color from my Sunny Stitches thread box. This thread box has all sorts of colors in it. I'm missing a green in there, and my red is over here. So lots of different colors that match my fabric lines, and so I often find myself reaching for one of these when I am hand quilting. So I've got the dark gray so that you can easily see the thread color as I am working. We are going to be using a stitch called the rocking stitch. It is a, uh, a stitch that you often use for hand quilting and it allows you to keep your stitches neat and tidy and nice and even. Another thing I want to mention is that as you start hand quilting, whether you are a seasoned hand quilter or if you are new to hand quilting, you might notice that your stitches aren't as even as you would like them to be when you very first start. And I will say that the first 15 minutes of a project, you might notice your stitches are not even, but maybe 20 minutes in, 30 minutes in, those 
stitches do start to even themselves out. So, and then of course, with practice, even longer than that, you're going to notice those stitches even out. So don't be alarmed if maybe they're not as straight and tidy within the first few minutes of your hand quilting. It is going to even out as you go along. So I like to start in my batting of my project. You'll notice I have a little excess batting as well as batting around the top of my project. We always like to have our batting and our backing, maybe an inch or two perimeter around your quilt sandwich. And especially when you're not using it just for, for practice, but when you're actually doing a project, make sure that you have left a nice amount of both batting and backing extended beyond the perimeter of your project. And we're just gonna come up on the edge here of our project. Remember my thread is knotted and I am just coming up right at the edge, right there. And then we're gonna do what's called the rocking stitch. So all you do is you're going to come down and your needle will lightly hit your finger underneath your project and then you're just gonna rock back up and then rock back down and that's really it. Now you're going to notice I am not using a thimble while I am hand quilting. I do not prefer to use a thimble and I have found that when I use this technique, I do not need to use a thimble because I am not framing or hooping my project and that really does make a difference. If you are doing a larger project that does require you to hoop it or to frame it, you are definitely going to want to use a thimble. A thimble. And you're probably going to end up using it on either your middle finger or maybe even your ring finger. I've seen people use thimbles on, on many different fingers so you would just experiment a little bit and see which works best for you. But typically you are using it on whichever finger you use to push your needle through the fabric. For me, that would be my middle finger. Um, but without a frame or a hoop, I can manipulate the thread as well as the fabric a little bit differently, which allows me to do this without using a thimble. And you'll just keep right on moving down. I do mark all of my projects when I'm hand quilting. I used my ring finger to push that time, so uh, that one does get a little bit of, of pushing on there too. And you'll just keep moving down. It's always so nice to have a hand project to work on, especially as we go into the winter months. I find hand quilting to be so nice. Uh, the stitch length and stitch uh, spacing in your 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 empty spots there and those are going to vary from person to person I think it's a lot like handwriting your stitch width and then also the spacing between your stitches is going to vary some people have a, a longer space in between some people have longer stitches there's no right or wrong way you're just looking for do do you like the way it looks and if you do you're good to go I find that mine tend to be about a quarter inch in length for both the spacing as well as the stitches. And we just carry on our merry way. This isn't hard. And if you can do this rocking stitch, your stitches will be more even than if you were just to do one stitch at a time. Now, I do wanna talk about how we stop and start stitches in the middle of a project. Maybe we are outlining and we have outlined everything we need to outline and we want to stop and we want to move to a different portion of our project and resume quilting there. If that happens, you're going to need to complete your stitch and I will show you how to secure that stitch so that you can move to another portion of your project. Let's say right here, we have completed where we need to and we are ready to move on. So you're gonna have your thread on, on the top here and you want to complete that stitch. So just come right down, straight down through. And then what you want to do is we are going to actually make another stitch right on top of this final stitch to lock that stitch in place. And so you'll just come right up. You wanna catch the very start of that stitch. And then you are going to make another stitch right on top of that and so instead of going all the way through the back, I have just run my needle in the batting portion of this project. So it's running right in through here. And then I'm gonna come up to the top. And what I wanna do now, if you're a cross stitcher, this is going to be very similar to a French knot. 
you'll just run your thread maybe two to three times around your needle. Hold that taut against your project and then just bring your thread all the way down through and that leaves you with a little knot on the top of your project. And then to bring that into the batting section of your project, you'll just take your needle, go in that same hole that you were just in, don't go through the back, come up a little bit away and then pop that needle down through or pop that knot down through. And there you go. And that's how that would work to end and then secure that last stitch. Now on the back, you're going to notice that because of the way we ended that stitch, these two little stitches right here are going to be a little bit closer together than if you were just continuing your stitch. And so that's what that is going to look like on the back. Annette Ellis had mentioned that she wanted to see the back of the projects as I'm hand quilting. So I'm gonna make sure to show you how these different things look. So that is how that will look on the back when you are completely stopping a stitch and then moving to another portion of the project to begin hand quilting somewhere else. And then I also wanted to show you guys regularly how my stitches run on the back is they run pretty similar to the front, but they do tend to run just a little bit smaller and my spacing is just a little bit wider on the back than it is on the front. So um, it's not uncommon for the stitches on the front to look just a little bit different than the stitches on the back. Let's flip that over and we would trim our thread here and then you would be ready to move to another portion of the project. Let's go ahead and do that. I will go ahead and make my knot. So a quilter's knot, you hold your needle horizontal to your project, wrap the thread around a couple times. Ugh, try not to lose hold of your thread while you're doing this. So wrap your thread around a couple times and then pinch your thread and then just slide it down your knot or slide it down your thread and you're left with just a little knot at the bottom. And that's called a quilter's knot. You don't have to do a knot that way, but that is a quick and easy way to do a knot. I'm just going to start back here. We're gonna pretend this is a new portion of my project. And what I wanna show you this time, I'm gonna do a couple stitches. And then what I want to show you is how we would stop and start if we are maybe running out of thread. So you want to continue using the same color thread, um, but you do need to grab a fresh piece of thread. So let's go ahead and put a couple stitches here and then I will show you how to do that. And I wanna show you that because it keeps your stitches running all the same on the back, which is wonderful. So just mosey down along this line here. And I'm gonna do just a couple more stitches and then I'll show you that. The other thing too I wanna to mention is as you are hand quilting, you want to make sure that we're not bunching up the fabrics as we go. You might see me kind of sandwich things up, crunch things up like this, but then um, we don't want to do any gathering as we are quilting. So sometimes you might just give it a little tug, make sure that everything is laying nice and flat before you keep going. Just something to keep in mind. These stitches can gather if you pull them too tight. I'll show you how that would look. So if you pull these too tight, you're going to get kind of a gathering. We don't want that. We want those to just run nice and flat. So keep that in mind as you're going. Okay, I'm gonna do one more stitch here. So say we're running out of thread and do make sure that you leave yourself plenty of thread before you, um, try to switch to grab a new piece of thread. If you let yourself get too small of a piece and then try to switch things out, it's much trickier to do. So make sure you've got a nice amount of thread, but you are getting low and we want to stop and then we want to continue going. So if, if that's what's happening, what you'll do here is you're going to do your one more stitch, but this is the one you aren't going to go down through. You're gonna stay in the batting layer on that final stitch. So it's a little bit different than if we are completely stopping and starting. So for this one, we are just running through that batting layer right now. And then we're gonna go ahead and do that same knot that you saw me do earlier. So a little French knot right on top. I don't know if it's actually called a French knot, but from a cross stitch point of view, it 
works very much the same as a French knot. And then you will just come down through that same line, that same hole rather, not the same line, and wiggle your needle. When you wiggle your needle, when I'm in the batting section, I'm trying to kind of wiggle my needle a little bit so that my thread gets buried in the batting layer rather than just running in between the top like just right underneath that top layer of fabric. And that helps, especially with a dark thread like what I'm using here, that you don't have shadowing coming up through your top layer of fabric. You want that thread to be in the batting rather than just running right underneath the fabric. So we'll pop that underneath there. And then we can trim this. And then you are ready to grab a fresh piece of thread I'll just go ahead and do that because that's getting kind of short. Grab a fresh piece of thread. I like to make sure that my thread runs the width of my project, especially when I'm just grabbing a new piece because I don't like to stop and start. I like to keep it continuous if I can. And so by making sure that my thread runs the whole way across, I can do that. And you will find that pearl cotton or like this 12 weight Aurifil that I'm using will not tangle up like embroidery floss. So if you're used to embroidery floss and how it tangles up, this kind of thread does not tangle like that. So you, you can use longer pieces of thread than you might think that you can. So we are ready to come back up and keep going. And what we will do is we want to go back over this last stitch, the same as we went over the other stitch when we ended, we want to lock that stitch in place. We have a length of thread that runs from here over to about here with a little knot at the end. And we don't want that to get worked up through for that last stitch to come out. So that's why we always lock those last stitches in place, especially with big stitch quilting where there is, um, it just is going to have more of a tendency to, to want to work out than if it was smaller stitches and smaller spaces. So we always lock those in. If you are a machine quilter, you're probably familiar with how you would run over the last couple stitches with a fresh, a fresh stitch when you're, when you're stopping and starting, and it's the same way with hand quilting. So what you'll do is you will come over here. Again, I am just in the batting layer and I wanna come up just like I did last time, right at the beginning of that stitch. And I'll pop that knot through. And 12 weight thread pops through pretty nicely. Let's snip that end off, pull that through, and then we are ready to continue. So what I will do is I'm gonna go right over top of that last stitch there. And all the way through this time, I'm hitting my finger down underneath, pivoting back up, and away we go. And that's what it would look like to stop and start if you've run out of thread. And then you can see how that looks. And my stitches are nice and tidy again. I'm gonna make a couple more and then I will show you the back and how that looks on the back. And while I'm stitching these out, I wanna mention that as I am doing this, I can easily see what my stitch width and spacing is. So I can see how long my space is. And then however much of my needle is showing right here, that is how long my stitches are going to be. So you can easily adjust this to your preferences. Okay, so let's flip that over. And then you can see on the back, we have a really nice continuous line when we start and stop the way that I showed you to do. And then I would just continue hand quilting and hand quilt all of the lines to my heart's content. If you are practicing on a quilt sandwich like this, one tip I have would be to not knot that beginning thread. And that allows you to just do a bunch of stitching, pull your thread out, and then practice again. It's a great way to practice. Of course, on a quilt sandwich like this, you can knot so that you can practice the knots, but uh, when we were growing up, that was the way my mom would have had us practice, is we would have just not knotted our thread and sat down with all of the grown-ups and practiced hand quilting, and then we would just stitch, and then pull everything out, stitch, pull everything out, and it's a great way to practice. 
that is, oh, I was gonna say that is what I wanted to show you, but I do have one more thing that I want to talk about, and that is how to end once you get over to the edge of your project. And I am not quite there yet, so let's just see if I can bang out a couple more stitches here, get over to the edge. These aren't gonna be tidy, because I'm gonna go a little bit faster, but I'll get us over to the edge, and then I will show you how I like to finish those. And then in our next video, I'm going to be sharing a fun little project with using hand quilting. So you can make your quilt sandwiches now, practice up, and then I will have a fun little project for you guys next time to put those hand quilting skills to use. I think it'll be fun. All right, we're getting there. Okay. So once I've made it over here to the end, I would just put just a little teeny knot, just go down a little bit, come up at the edge. They, these knots that we have at the edge are either going to be in the binding or they're gonna end up getting trimmed away when you trim your project. So I don't worry too much about these looking beautiful. They just need to hold your stitches in place. So that is the last thing then that I wanted to show you about the hand quilting technique. It's not tricky. Uh, it should hopefully be fun and simple to do. Getting the right tools, your, your thimble that you like to use, your needle, your thread that you like to use, all of those things make a difference. And I mentioned it in my last video, but I will say it again. We have a lot of different resources available to us, supplies that we can use. And much like piecing, if you've been piecing quilts for years, you know that there are different rulers you can use, different ways to approach things, and you probably have favorite ways of doing things. So this is the technique and the supplies that I like to use, but you might find that you prefer something just a little bit different. So I would encourage you to watch other hand quilting videos and get an idea for some other things that may work even better than, than the way that I prefer doing things because there are so many different ways we can do these. Um, and in our next video, I will be sharing that project I talked about so that you can have a fun little something to work on. And if you have any questions about anything I talked about, like I said earlier, those comments are so helpful to me to know what I missed, what I didn't explain well. So please leave me those comments so that I can, I can help you out in any way that I'm able to. And if you're not already subscribed, I would love to have you do so. And I will catch you again next time.